I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I'm not the only one struggling with consistency at the moment. I recently moved cities and have been working from home during lockdown. I've had to build a new routine and as a result have lost a bit of momentum. So I went back to the drawing board. I wanted to find ways I can quickly flip my mindset to generate more effective and sustainable work output. What I love about mindset is that we already have the tools, it's just a matter of changing our perspective. Okay, so there's three mindset shifts which I've decided to focus on. If you feel like you need to regather some momentum in your life, I really challenge you to try these. Let me know how they go and hopefully we can go on this journey together. But before we rip into it, if you could please like and subscribe, it'll help my channel grow. Mindset shift number one is nurturing my center of gravity. I first heard about this term center of gravity in this context in this book, Happy by Darren Brown. I thought it was a really lovely way to describe that feeling of being grounded and settled. Our center of gravity must be brought inside where it belongs. Locating it in others is where we get into trouble. So our center of gravity is keeping our energy and our sense of self and our happiness within ourselves. Nurturing our center of gravity will build that internal resilience. When we have a solid center of gravity, we don't need to impress other people, we don't need to project, and we don't need to escape through alcohol or drugs or whatever it may be. And lately I felt pretty scattered and anxious from this move. So it's important that I reclaim that center of gravity so that I can build a solid foundation on top of which I can then go on to build good habits and be effective with work. For this to work, you need to find some strategies that are gonna help you reconnect with your center of gravity. For me, it's exercising in nature, it's going for a walk, reading a book, something where you're throwing away your screen and connecting with yourself. So I actually started that this morning. I woke up early and went down to the beach for a walk, tried not to check my phone and connected with my center of gravity. I feel so much more grounded now and it really is a great way to start your day. As we know, exercise is so great for mental health. It burns off anxiety and releases dopamine. So for me, getting up early and exercising is truly the best way to start my day. So find your center of gravity. Build that foundation so that when you sit down for work, you feel grounded, you feel settled, in control, and you can start to be effective. Mindset shift number two, I'm really gonna focus on making small, terrific decisions. There's a quote by Charles Dewey, the difference between who you are and who you wanna be is what you do. And it sounds so simple, but in life, it's not always the big choices which shape our direction. Sure, choosing a job, choosing a partner, choosing where to live, these are all important choices, but they're kind of rare. It's actually the small decisions that we make every day which genuinely move the needle. Turning off the TV at night to read a book, choosing to go for a walk instead of TikTok, or choosing what to eat for breakfast. These are the decisions which have a compounding effect and can snowball and create hundreds of great decisions on the back of them. So when I'm in a slump, say I'm feeling lazy on the couch, I'll make that mindset shift just to make one good decision. Go take the rubbish out, which then gives me a sense of accomplishment and I'll do the kitchen. That gives me energy to vacuum the whole house. You get the point. It builds a sense of momentum really, really quickly. So next time you're feeling sluggish or slow, just make that mindset shift and make one small, terrific decision. This applies to exercise as well. When you're first starting out at the gym, the worst thing you can do is go for two hours and completely overdo it, be sore for a week, and then you'll never wanna go back. It's gonna be much more effective if you just decide to do one or two things at the gym, just show up, do one or two things, get that sense of accomplishment, get some runs on the board, and then you're gonna actually wanna go back the next day. In life, small habits and choices made daily compound over time. Say you put your phone in the kitchen at night, then you're less likely to check it when you wake up in the morning, which means that you'll get out of bed faster and more likely to exercise. If you exercise, there's science that shows that you're more likely to eat better. And if you eat better, you're gonna sleep better. And you can see that that simple act of putting your phone in the kitchen at night has a snowball effect and tens of great decisions come off the back of it. So to kickstart my momentum, I'm really just gonna focus on making small, terrific decisions. Starting with taking a sip of this coffee. The third mindset shift I'm working on is deliberate rest and recovery. LeBron James told Tim Ferriss on his show that he needs between eight and 10 hours sleep a night. In fact, he's known to spend millions of dollars on recovery a year. And his trainer said that recovery is a never-ending process. I think we should all take a leaf out of LeBron's book. 
Getting adequate sleep is something that I've been really trying to work on. I'm not the best sleeper and I love waking up early. So I need to be intentional with my nighttime hours to make sure that I'm getting seven or eight hours a night. If I get eight hours, I feel amazing. With all of the research coming out on sleep, it seems that prioritizing rest and recovery could be the most important mindset shift we make. I'm so pleased that we seem to be steering against this cult of busyness and the hustle mentality that we glorified as a society for so long. The thought of working 16 hour days seems so ridiculous to me. Maybe if you're cramming for an assignment or for uni, but there's no way that's sustainable and it's clearly gonna do more damage than good. As organisms, we need to breathe out to breathe back in. And so I'm focusing on deliberate rest and recovery knowing that that could be the most productive thing I do that day. Think about that. Rest could be the most productive thing you do that day. And deliberate rest and recovery goes beyond just sleep. If we treat ourselves like LeBron James for a second, I think if we clearly define a framework around what rest and recovery looks for us, we're gonna see enormous benefits. I've never really thought about it like that, but rest and recovery is really a skill that we should be trying to develop. So let's give ourselves permission to take rest and be super intentional about it by choosing things that are going to genuinely add to our happiness and fulfillment. My favorite rest is reading a book on the beach or going surfing. And now knowing that I can do those things guilt-free because they're actually gonna help me be more productive, that's really exciting. So I challenge you to think about what your optimum rest and recovery looks like. Another thing I've realized lately is that stress doesn't always show up like we expect it to. We can work away for weeks and compartmentalize something that we're worried about or something that we're anxious about until it bubbles to the surface and becomes overwhelming. We can't always rely on those mechanisms for feedback. We need to preempt it and that's where rest and recovery comes into play. Because the reality is if you're overworking, it will eventually catch up to you. So rest up, my friends. <laughs> mm. That's good squishy. Can you do me a quick solid and hit the bell icon, like, subscribe, and send it to a mate, maybe your mom, grandma, whatever. I'm really excited to make these mindset shifts. And if you're keen to get involved, let me know down below in the comments and we'll chat there. Until next week, you can find me on Instagram or my blog. Take care and chat soon.